Hi guys and welcome to today's video where we are going to go over a highly debated subject of whether leopard geckos need UVB. So the short answer is technically they don't need it as synthetic D3 is a thing. However, I don't think it is as simple as that. So firstly, let's just go over a few very outdated statements that come up every time someone tries to debate that UVB should not be used altogether. The best breeders don't use UVB in their rack systems. So I understand where this is coming from because surely if a gecko is healthy enough to reproduce then why would you introduce UVB? Like obviously synthetic D3 is doing everything. Well there's a few points, okay? So one, leopard geckos can reproduce in fairly poor conditions. Two, synthetic D3, yes it does work and I used it for years. However there are some major downsides which I'll get into in a bit. Three, people should not look at rack systems as an inspiration for an enclosure. For me, I feel living in a sterile tank, not seeing the light of day and occasionally being bred with isn't like the kind of life I would want for my pets. To be honest, they're probably merely existing rather than thriving and I think as pet owners we should probably try to provide the very best we can for our geckos. The next statement that comes up is they're nocturnal, so they wouldn't be exposed to it in the wild. They're not nocturnal, they are crepuscular. I go into more detail in my other video, which I'll link at the end. Uh, the next point is it will hurt their eyes. To be honest, I thought this was true, especially with my albino geckos, but it doesn't seem to affect them at all. The next one is they won't lay out in it, and I can tell you for sure they will. Um, I thought definitely my wild ones will, that how they are is naturally how they would be in the wild. So of course UV will be just natural to them. I thought it would be a bit trickier with my albinos, but if you've seen my pictures, if you follow me, you know that they are laying out on it all the time. And finally, you can just supplement D3, so what's the point? Well, we will get into that in a bit. The funny thing is, I feel like I'm debating the younger me because there's definitely there's a video on my channel where I explain why UVB is not necessary, so it's like debating myself from a few years ago. And I did keep that video up because I didn't want you to think that I've suddenly changed my mind, I don't want you to know that I used to think like that. However, I may take it down because some people see my older videos first and they get really confused as to why one minute I'm saying you shouldn't use it and now I've changed. But to be honest, and the way I do things is if new information is presented to you is backed up by evidence, just saying no, I don't want to hear it, I'm not going to change, I've always done it this way. It's just the worst attitude to have, especially in the reptile community, because I think even from 10 years from now, we'll probably be doing something completely different, but it's all about progressing. So as I said at the start, technically, we don't have to have a UVB light and everything, because we can provide synthetic D3, but it does have some really big downfalls. For example, D3, along with a few other vitamins, is fat soluble. So if you are given too much of it, that builds up around organs. And I have noticed that a lot of leopard geckos get to around maybe 15 and they start having liver issues. And I do wonder if that's sort of linked. Also talking about dosing, it's difficult for us to really know how much they need. The good thing about using a light is a leopard gecko then gets to choose. Does it move closer to the light? Does it go in its hide? Does it just stick out a leg? What is up to the gecko? It knows itself. It knows what it needs. So dosage wise we could be definitely giving them too much D3 or not enough. I also think a big thing to point out is the lack of knowledge around supplements when it comes to reptiles. It is infuriating for me to hear about people getting a leopard gecko and just not understanding what they're meant to be putting into the gecko's body, so they may just be providing calcium and D3 with every single feed, which is completely wrong. And that's what I mean, you can go so wrong with using synthetics. Next, I find multivitamins with synthetics in tend to lose their potency a lot quicker and also it's just not a natural way for them to receive D3. It would be like us sitting in a room not seeing sunlight ever and just being given supplements to get vitamin D. 
So I hope that's cleared things up because I know there's a bit of confusion and obviously as I said in this video, technically you don't have to use a light but I definitely would recommend it. I'm just a person who has a bunch of reptiles. I'm not here to push a product on you. I'm not saying, oh you definitely need to do this because you have to get this product, anything like that. I'm just saying from my experience, I went for like maybe 10 years nearly using synthetics. Yes, they work but having done more and more research I can appreciate that actually a light is a better option with natural supplements. I, th I feel like our geckos will do so much better. So I'm putting it out there. I know some people will still not agree. That is the downside of the reptile community. There are people who are so stuck in their own bubble and they don't want to hear anything else. So we can leave them guys in the past. But I feel like if you want to be... Uh, a decent owner who wants to provide the very best for their gecko, I feel like the natural way is the way to go. Even doing my natural setup recently where I went from eco -er for plastic hides to a completely natural setup, I've seen such a difference in Ziggy and I just hope this is the way we are going in the future because I think it would be really cool. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you want to learn more about UVB, UVA or the product I use, click the link here. And if you missed any of the cards throughout this video, remember you can always click the I in the corner and it all pop up. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. I have over 500 videos, mainly about geckos, but there are a few cheeky series in there. So enjoy that. But thanks for watching guys and goodbye.